Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for February the 29th of 2020, well, it is titled Julius Caesar and Leap Days. So what do we see here? Well, the image is of an old Roman coin showing the likeness of Julius Caesar. And Julius Caesar uh, was one who, the ruler who first implemented the idea of a leap day. And that was done because we measure days and years by two different things. A day is uh, what we call the solar day, is how long it takes from the sun to get from its peak, a solar noon, till it reaches the peak again, which takes about 24 hours. A year is how long it takes the earth to move around the sun once. So the day is based on the rotation of the earth and the year on the revolution of the earth. And there is no reason these two have to be related. And in fact, it turns out that there are 365.2419 solar days in one year. And that means that you'd be missing a quarter of a day every year if you use a 365-day calendar. So what Caesar had done was to add an extra day every four years so that the things would even out. And that worked very well for a while, but 365.242 is a little bit less than 365 and a quarter. So the time was continuing to change slightly. It wasn't easily noticeable over a lifetime, but over longer periods of time it was. And by the 1500s, it was quite a bit different. So that Pope Gregory in 1582 uh, changed the calendar again in how we judge leap e how we do leap years. And in fact, it had drifted that much that 10 days had to be dropped out of the calendar to bring things back in line. So people went to sleep on October the 4th of 1582 and woke up on October the 15th of 1582 to bring everything back in line. Now to keep this from happening again, what, uh, what the Gregorian calendar does is to eliminate century years, years ending in two zeros as leap years. So generally 1700, 1800, and 1900 were not leap years. But then to keep everything aligned, you added to have to add one more uh, case back in there, and that is if a century year is divisible by 400, then it is a leap year. So the year 200 was a leap year. However, the next three centuries, 2100, 2200, and 2300, will be ordinary years with 365 days. And those will balance everything out over time and keep it pretty close uh, to the rough, uh, to keep the things pretty close together so that the seasons will not slowly be drifting. And as is noted, if you didn't do this, uh, July, if you're, not, if you're not doing that, July would eventually occur during the winter time because of this slow drift. And that's the reason that, of course, Caesar uh, started, the leap, started the leap years. And then uh, the Gregorian calendar changed that and refined it to make it work a little bit better. Now, as is mentioned in the description here, uh, the, this is not consistent, and actually the Earth's rotation is slowing down, and our day is getting slowly getting longer. And it's a very small amount, 14 milliseconds every 100 years, but that does mean that if you wait about 4 million years from now, leap days would not be necessary at all. So that was our picture of the day for February the 29th of 2020. It was titled Julius Caesar and Leap Days. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture, previewed to be a hole in Mars. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.